I'd uh, like to call this meeting to order tonight. We have the presentations of colors and the Pledge of Allegiance by Owen High School, instructed by uh, Colonel Richard Bacani, U.S. Army, retired. I ask that you rise. Guard. Hats forward, march. March, march. Guard, march. Guard, march. Freeze it, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, cause. Right, face. Forward, march. I ask that you pause for a moment of silence. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> um, tonight we're going to remove an item uh, from uh, which section here? An agenda, and um, that is the Hawk Creek Elementary School Additions and Renovations Project, and I am asking for approval of the agenda uh, as amended. So moved. Thank you. Could I get a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Superintendent's comments. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a reminder that while tomorrow uh, remains an early uh, dismissal day for our schools, next Monday, March the 11th, is now a regular student attendance day, and that will take place for instruction. The month of March has in the past provided some really challenge uh, situations and decisions for us when it comes to, uh, to winter weather. Uh, but we do have the potential to use up to three additional days at the end of the calendar, if needed. Hopefully that stays at if needed. I would also like to recognize the excellent performances that took place last month on February 26th during the all-county choral program uh, for elementary, intermediate, and middle school students. Uh, Ms. Pate and several leadership staff were there. Um, that was um, just a wonderful ceremony. Uh, thanks to all of our music teachers, along with Laura Mitchell for making this such a special event. And a thanks to Brookstone Church in Weaverville for allowing us to lease their facility and being very good hosts. On March 13th, we will be celebrating middle school success through the arts. UNC Asheville will once again be hosting this event. It will be in coordination with our partners at United Way. And for the remainder of the school year, the Ingalls Mountain View Room in the Sherrill Center on the UNCA campus will house and promote 50 pieces of artwork that's been created by Buncombe County and Asheville City School students uh, at the middle schools. The 2019 Summer Student Summit, not Summer Summit, but Student Summit, sponsored by the Partnership for Substance-Free Youth in Buncombe County, and that's in partnership with the Buncombe County Health and Human Services. That's going to be held at the Blue Ridge Assembly on March 21st. Uh, Ms. Bryant, we appreciate your leadership with that and, and uh, direction. I was fortunate enough to attend that summit last year, and I was just blown away by the level of participation and the uh, uh, investment that uh, so many of our students uh, uh, provided uh, in that particular session. Uh, these are some of our top student leaders from our high schools, and the focus is on prevention of um, drug and alcohol addiction. Finally, I want to thank Lisa Roberts and Tina Thorpe at the district level for efforts in making students at Work Week once again a very successful endeavor across Buncombe County. 
Um, we teamed with Asheville City and Madison County uh, Schools and provided workplace visits for 1,197 middle schoolers and high school students uh, that got an opportunity to visit uh, potential uh, career workplaces such as hospitality and health service, advanced manufacturing in the trades. They were all represented and uh, for, again, for some wonderful future options and uh, that has just become one of our, just really the uh, events we look so forward to every year, Ms. Swanner. That concludes my comments, Madam Chair. Well, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is good news. Madam Chair, members of the board, tonight we have a couple of pieces of good news to bring to you. Uh, first up, if Ms. Meg Turner could come on down. She's the principal of Owen High School. She's here to tell us a little bit more about the Lighthouse Award. Owen High was one of just several schools across North Carolina to earn this distinction this year. Two of my uh, great colleagues here, Samantha Gallman, who's our, one of our media specialists, and B.B. Charlton, who's one of our assistant principals. B.B. Charlton and I are not related, even though we tell the students that we are. <laughs> <laughs> North Carolina ASCD Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development offers every year a Lighthouse Award, and the Lighthouse Award is given to several schools. I think they're usually three or four winners every year, and the award is an application-based award, so you have to submit an application to be considered to win the award. And we submitted an application in the fall of 2017, and we were not selected. But for those of you who know us at Owen, we don't really take no kindly. So we applied again this fall with our application and we were selected this year. So we were super excited about that. It's given based on your application where you report your um, parent involvement, your community partnerships, the innovations that you have in your school, and then all that leading, they believe and we believe to student success. So we had to enter student academic criteria along with these other pieces. And it's been, this is my eighth year at Owen, and there have been a number of things that we consider innovative over those eight years. Some of you have heard about Smart Lunch. Um, we also are really proud of the PLC work that our teachers are doing and the public teaching practices that we have. We also have created and added, added advocate groups uh, that we, we call advocates, sort of an advisor advisory uh, program. And then most recently, we did a boost camp towards ACT preparation. Those are just some of the examples of innovation. I'll let these two share a little bit more about that, but we want $1,000. We're not really sure uh, exactly how we're gonna spend the 1,000. We know we need to spend it, Dr. Baldwin, so we're working on that. We're gonna tuck it away and do something special, both for our teachers and for our students. And I would say that the thing that I'm the most proud of in my time at Owen is that we have a pretty rigorous hiring process, and we're betting almost a thousand on that. We have some incredible teachers there, and I'm super, super proud of them. And this award really is reflective of their work with our kids. So, Mrs. Charlton and Mrs. Gallman. Yeah, I just want to say that um, I'm really honored to work at Owen High School, and I feel like that this award is real, award is really representative of what our faculty does every day in the classroom, and what a cohesive, collaborative, innovative group they are. They're very hardworking. They're never shy of taking on a new project and trying to do something. I feel like continuous improvement has kind of become a catchphrase, but I feel like that at Owen, we really focus on continuous improving for learning, and it shows. I love working with my um, sister, Miss Turner. <laughs> I don't have much to add. I would like to thank the Academy for this award. <laughs> um, I will say that uh, I've been at Owen now for about six years, and I started there as a classroom teacher. Uh, Dr. Sprague knows me from that experience, and I sure enjoyed working with her and Donna Pate. And I tell you, it's a special, special place. Um, I think, um, and I will say this is true of Buncombe County Schools in general, we do a really good job of balancing uh, care of the child, test scores. Care of the child. And I think at Owen we've done a lot of things and undertaken a lot of initiatives to do that care of the child. Test scores, yeah, we're happy with that. 
but care of the child is what's really important. So we have advocate groups so that we uh, make sure that kids are feeling comfortable and connected. <clears throat> we have smart lunch so they can get tutoring, but they can also experience social life and get some guidance in terms of just experiencing social life as a teenager and making transitions. Um, we undertake green schools initiatives based upon students' interest in improving their world. So we do care of the child really well. Test scores, that's good too. <laughs> Next up, I'd like to invite Ms. Debbie Bryant up to the podium. She's our Healthful Living Coordinator. She's here to introduce us to our State Health Educator of the Year, our very own Ms. Mandy Gladys. Thank you. Good evening, Dr. Baldwin, Madam Chair, and fellow board members. Um, tonight, we are here to honor um, the State High School Health Educator of the Year. Uh, how many of you would like, think you could spend your day talking to middle school and high school students all day about reproductive health and safety? <laughs> Sounds like a dream job, right? <laughs> Well, we're very lucky here in our district to have, uh, that we have the support from our administration that to actually provide three designated health educators who do just that. Um, we provide uh, reproductive health and safety education from grades four all the way through grade nine. And so uh, it's only fitting that we have one of our special outstanding educators um, uh, being recognized tonight. Um, tonight we'll be honoring one of our best, Amanda Gladys. She stays abreast of current research and trends in reproductive health. Her lessons are informative, they're engaging. She maintains a classroom where it's very, a safe, very safe place to have discussions that are respectful and sometimes even uh, controversial uh, in, the, in the discussions that, but she also sets boundaries and limits within, within that uh, classroom. So with ninth grade being one of our last opportunities to speak to students about reproductive health, she takes every uh, time and every moment and makes everything count while she's working with these students. She maximizes every teaching moment possible. Mandy is a lifelong learner herself. She has presented in um, local, state, and uh, national conferences. And because of these reasons and many more, um, Mandy was recently recognized as the North Carolina High School Health Educator of the Year. So please join me in tonight recognizing her for this exceptional honor. Um, our curriculum feature. Yes, Dr. Baldwin, Madam Chair, board members. Tonight we are featuring our Chinese Language and Culture Program. And this is both a part of our Global Education Initiative as well as our World Languages and both in your strategic plan. Uh, we have teachers, we have a student here this evening, and you all may remember Ms. Linda Sprague, a retired administrator, who serves as a mentor for this wonderful program. Dr. Sherry Boone is the facilitator and the director who works with our world languages and dual language and global ed. She had to be out of state to be with her father this evening, so we have asked Ms. Doris Sellers to come forward, and tonight you're going to hear about our program you're going to speak some Chinese, and you're going to hear from a student. So. 
Come on down. Okay, just come gather round. We're all together. So good evening, uh, Dr. Baldwin, Madam Chair Franklin, members of the board, and our guests. I was absolutely honored when asked to introduce our curriculum feature this evening, the Buncombe County Schools Chinese Language and Culture Program. Our first Mandarin Chinese language program began, it was the first class in 2009-10 at the Early College with two classes. Today, in 2010-11, in Dr. Lambert made a phone call and brought that program over to A.C. Reynolds High School. Today, we are in seven of our high schools. We offer Chinese one and two in all seven of those schools, and we teach level three and four at T.C. Robertson High School, all of those available as well online in our traditional high schools. And beginning next year, Ica High School and Reynolds High School will be offering Chinese three honors to our students. She's excited about that. <laughs> so since the program's inception in Buckham County School, we have had a steady increase in our enrollment to where we're currently serving 320 students. Across North Carolina, nearly 13,000 students are in Mandarin Chinese classes, third only to Spanish and French. Mandarin Chinese is the most widely spoken language in the world. So here in North Carolina, we are making efforts to prepare our students for their global future. Buckham County Schools has four Chinese language teachers. This is not one of them. <laughs> Could be, they, they say. That's right, in the future, and they are shared between our seven schools. In the beginning of our program, teachers were selected for us and they arrived in our communities. Our program began through the Hanban Confucius Institute headquarters that with a partnership with College Board and the Chinese Ministry of Education. Today, now, we have the options to hire through Hanban, participate, EPI, and go global North Carolina. We have the wonderful experience of being able to Skype interview our candidates and select our own candidates. And all of these candidates are, are teachers that we have chosen, not that Hanban has selected and sent to us. So we have been able to have the pleasure of hiring all of these fine ladies. And I think you're going to see here tonight that we have outstanding Mandarin Chinese language teachers. Not only are they part of our school communities, they're part of our larger community. Our teachers arrive and they spend some time in Raleigh in training with other global teachers until we pick them up to come to our great county of Buncombe. We assist them with housing, cars. Two of them have gotten cars from my husband. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He takes good care of them too. And our overall settling into our community. In our case, we have one teacher who lives with Stephanie Buckner, our math specialist. This is Lynn Lynn, and Stephanie has also been home with her in the summers. We have another who lives with another Buncombe County Schools employee, and then two of our teachers live in our teacher housing that we have here in our community. In addition to Dr. Sherry Boone and Dr. Regina Lambert, who work closely with our Chinese language teachers, as mentioned, we are fortunate to have Dr. Linda Sprague, who a Buncombe County former teacher, principal, and my mentor, first person I met in teaching, my mentor as well, who has come back to mentor these teachers, both in the classroom and the social setting. Often, you will find Dr. Sprague and our teachers hiking, picnicking, or just having dinner together by themselves, and she expands that, and when she has a dinner party, they all come and join us as well. And she also works with them discussing classroom management, lesson plans, what it's like to teach American students, because from my visit to China, American students are just a little bit different than the students that they are accustomed to. When you visit there, you walk in and all the students stand. They have an assembly, they stand, and it's just a whole different environment. So that's a big part of what Dr. Sprague works with them is how do you relate to American students and many other topics. Tonight, we are just honored to hear from them. This is a program about them tonight. Um, Lin Lin Shun is our teacher from A.C. Reynolds. And Ms. Turner, I see you up there. 
I do reluctantly, you know, we're taught as children to share. So I reluctantly share with her in the fall semester for a period and, and it's so we jointly share her. They're going to tell you what schools they serve here tonight. Lynn Lynn is just an outstanding classroom teacher. I mean, I send my teachers to her classroom to see what it's like to be a master teacher. She is that outstanding. So she's going to tell you a little bit about her personal story. She has a video to share with her students, and then she will introduce our next speaker to you. So I am very honored to present our Mandarin Chinese language program. So oh, uh, thank you, Miss Sellers, and I love you. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so and uh, yeah, I'm Lin Lin Shan. Now I'm working at uh, a AC Reynolds High School, and uh, so I actually when I decided to add the you know the video for our Chinese class, I probably listed about 21 items. So I wish includes the Chinese language, Chinese culture, and the Chinese club. So. And if you want to know more about Chinese class and also want to know why the students actually like this class a lot, so we will watch this video. But before that is, and you know, our time is actually limited. So I didn't edit all these 21 items. Um, but the question is, how many items I actually added for this video? All right, watch it. <laughs>
watching, when I actually, I watched that, before I did that, I didn't have like any feelings, but now I'm watching it like, oh, I, I'm so proud of my students actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right, yeah, so question. How many items actually added for this video? Yeah, just give me a number like. I count 16. Very close, like 16 is very close. Actually it's 17. <laughs> yes, good job. <laughs> yeah, so. Dumplings or something? <laughs> yeah, I should have, yeah, I should have some dumplings for you. Yeah, for the price, yes. All right, so this is actually, like, basically I want to say like what that, that, then you will know what we actually do during the class and why the students love this class so much because of that. All right, so next one will be E. She will talk about the biggest uh, takeaways when she is teaching here. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Um, I need to say that it's such a great video. Thank you, Lele. <laughs> All right, so everyone, I will say Chinese first and then I will translate it in English. So don't freak out if you feel like, oh, I don't know what this language is. <laughs> okay, 尊敬的嘉宾,大家好,我叫杨怡。非常荣幸能够和大家在这里分享我的经历。今年是我在这里的第二年,我在三所学校工作,我非常享受在这里的生活,谢谢. Um, okay, um, good evening, Madam Chair, Member of the Board, and Dr. Bowen. I am Yi Yang, I've come from Beijing, China. Um, this is actually my second year teaching in our county. And then today I would like to share some of my takeaways in working here. So first of all, I would say my biggest takeaway is the wonderful experience I had here. So since I am the only Chinese teacher working in three schools, so I work in Owen High School with Ms. Turner, and Inca High School, and Bankham County Early College. So I get more chances to know, um, to teach more sweet students, and work with more awesome colleagues, and, um, and really supportive administration teams. So I work in Anka in the fall semester and then I really love the stuff breakfast <laughs> every month, yes. And the reason I would love it is like, during the stuff breakfast, I got the chance to try a lot of American food and I could make a lot of more friends there and I feel more belonged there. And then in the fall semester, I work in Owen High School. I really like the idea of um, having the ACT boost camp or like some of the having a party with good students, have good performance, good attendance and uh, good gradings. So it keeps reminds me how important the power of giving positive feedback to the students. And then I work in Bankham County Early College uh, in the sm uh, spring semester as well. And um, I kind of benefit a lot from every Thursday afternoon's meeting. So during the meeting, we not only go through our agendas, we also talk about um, like what we should learn. And recently we have been discussing about how to do a step-by-step -step peer observation form. So it can help me a lot. Um, and then the second takeaway that I will mention is that the strategies I learned from all the PDs and PLCs. So uh, here I have to thank, <laughs> I have to thank Dr. Boone, Dr. Lambert, and Dr. Spratch. They're awesome team leaders for Chinese program. Um, so because of them, they're always supportive about the PD and the PLCs for us. And I got a lot of good ideas and I brought it back to my classroom. And then the other very important thing that I learned is how to build our Chinese program in our county. And then how to make more students, more teachers and more communities uh, join in our group. Um, and in the last, I would like to mention that um, I will never forget the awesome time uh, hiking with Dr. <laughs> Spratch and Dr. Vaughn. So we have a wonderful time like hiking in Blue, uh, Smoky Mountains. And I really enjoy driving in Blue Ridge Parkway, which is awesome. And <laughs> yes, and I experienced, I learning a lot of um, how to make American food like uh, macaroni and cheese. 
It's my favorite. <laughs> and I love cheesecake. I tried it, but uh, it's not that good. <laughs> and the other one that I learned is like the grilled cheese. So a lot of cheese. <laughs> yeah, you could tell what is my favorite. <laughs> and then I would like to thank all the people that I met here and all the great experience you give it to me. Thank you so much. All right, and I'm so thankful for this opportunity. Thank you. Next one, I will introduce my friend Ling. She is a Chinese teacher working in TC Robinson, and she's going to demonstrate some simple Chinese language. Uh, hey guys, I'm sorry. Uh, good evening, I am Ling Li. Uh, I am working in TC Robson. Hi, and now I'm going to teach you some Chinese, just a very simple one. Okay, you ready for learning Chinese? Mm -hmm. And may I have the honor of invite all of you, like one, two, three, four, eight, 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 oh, okay. 10 of you to come over here and stand in two line. <laughs> Hi, dear students. Thank you. Hi, please. You want to get straight on and not do a side? Or? Ni hao. Ni hao. Very good. Next one is Ni hao ma. Like, how are you? Ni hao ma. Ni hao ma. Okay, move a little bit more. Thank you. One more time. Ni hao ma. Ni hao ma. Okay, the last one is goodbye. 再见. 再见. Once again. 再见. Okay, move a little bit more. Thank you. Okay, the last time. One, two, three, go. 你好, 你好吗? 再见, go. 你好, 你好吗? 再见. <laughs> Okay, guys. <laughs> you want to try? No, Do you want to try? Okay. Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao ma. Zai jian. Ni hao. Ni hao ma. Zai jian. Okay, thank you so much. You did a very good job. Very good job. All right. Um, next. Uh, next will be my very good friend. She will share her family story with you and her lovely daughter. That's welcome. Good 我的名字叫子明照，我现在在Urban High School 和 North Bancombe High School 教中文。我的全家在阿什维尔已经有一年半了，我们非常享受在这里的生活。Good evening. My name is Ziming Zhao. I'm teaching Chinese at Urban High and North Buncombe High School. My whole family, my husband, my daughter, and I have been living in Asheville for more than one year and a half. And I should say that this is one of the best experiences to our family, and we feel happy and lucky for able to work, study, and live here. 我的丈夫白天的时候在AB Tech学习英文 晚上的时候做兼职工作 我的女儿Grace她在West Buncombe Elementary读小学四年级 
My husband is now taking free English class at AB Tech during the daytime, and doing part-time delivery job during the nighttime. This beautiful young lady, me, Grace. <laughs> it's a fourth-grade student at West Macomb Elementary. Did I say beautiful? Yes. And I like my school very much. The teacher and student are nice to me, and more importantly to me, I have less homework in America than I have in China. <laughs> Thank you, Grace. Yeah. Do you remember uh, that how Grace reacted uh, when she heard that we were planning a trip to America? And she cried and told me that I don't want to go. I don't want to leave my friend in China. And uh, I'm afraid I couldn't make any friend there because at that time, she could only I barely speak hello and a goodbye in English. And my husband had his concern too. Could we afford housing in America? And uh, <clears throat> what if Grace doesn't like her school? And what she spent, I mean, how he spent his life when Grace and I, we both go to school. And, but anyway, we decided to face this challenge together as a family and we started our adventurous trip to America in August 2017. After we arrived, Buncombe County Schools offered us uh, with affordable, newly built apartment with two bedrooms. And in, that's a teacher's housing apartment building, which named Williams Botwin Court which enabled us to settle down right after our arrival. We are so happy because we have our home in Asheville, which means a lot to us. And on my first day of my work, uh, I found my school was wonderful. I love my school. And uh, in the third uh, week, introduced by one of my colleagues, my husband started his start, uh, English class in AB Tech. And in third week, we're here. My daughter, Grace, she told me she had her first best friend in class. Yes. So, yes, we began, enjoyed our life here since, since then. Right? And now, Grace loves uh, her school very much. Yeah, she is very happy every day. And my husband, she can conduct simple conversation <laughs> with her customs, and uh, she can get more tips for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, I, keep, I keep diary every day, and uh, because I have a lot of things to share when I go back to China. When I'm doing this, I will like start with this. Every day, we feel grateful and uh, we are lucky and happy to have this opportunity to live here and study here. That is my story. Thank you for listening. Hasn't that been wonderful? I mean, what a joy it is for us to have them in our lives and we hope we have in some way left an impression in your <coughs> lives as well. And you can tell what outstanding teachers they must be just by their presentation tonight. Our students absolutely love them, and it has been a joy to have them in our school. I wish you could have just heard Grace. Grace said, Mommy, you're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and I believe that you hear tonight just how much we are doing in Buckham County Schools to have our students prepared for a tomorrow that does include a global education. So thank you for supporting our program. <laughs> Get off the one.
one step backwards. Right? <coughs> there we go. Great. All right, right here. Three, two, one. Thank you. Thanks for coming. I believe we have one public comment this evening. Yes, Madam Chair, we have one public comment tonight. We have Anita Barnwell of Asheville here to speak about intensive intervention. Ms. Barnwell, they instructed you about the light here in, here, right here in front of um, Mr. Bryant. Okay. <laughs> and speak into the microphone, please. Okay. I'm just waiting for them to exit. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, I am here seeking help to um, get some answers. My son is a student in the Intensive Intervention Program, which is currently at Fairview Elementary School. Back in the fall, I received a vague letter stating that the program would be relocating to Hall Creek Elementary in either January 2020 or the fall. And it stated if I had questions that I could ask them of the staff. And I have asked many questions, and I have received responses but not answers. Um, I keep getting delays each month, and um, I was told I would get a newsletter sometime this month, but no direct answers to my questions. So I begin to worry that there aren't many answers, and curious why it's happening. I don't have time to address all my concerns here, but I do have three main concerns, and the first is the safety of my son. He is nonverbal and autistic, and he has run away from school before, been lost due to inadequate fencing at schools and inadequately trained staff. Um, when he was at one school, he got through a fence and crossed a parking lot near a creek and luckily was distracted by another playground and went through another hole in the fence instead of crossing a busy highway. And so my concern is what is being done at Haw Creek to prevent this from happening again because I can't get that phone call again. Second, my second concern is for the staff. Um, the letter said the teachers would be moving, but what about the therapists? And what about the other staff at Haw Creek? Will they be trained for dealing with kids like my son? My third concern is about the community playground that was built at Fairview Elementary. A lot of community dollars and time was spent building the playground so that children with disabilities would be able to have the same opportunities as the other children to enjoy playground equipment such as swings and slides. And it took a lot of time to build and is just now being able to be used. And so my concern is, with most of the children who would use this playground moving now to Hall Creek, what does that mean for this playground? And it is a community playground, but it's meant for the children that mostly attend Fairview. So those are my main concerns, and if anyone can help me get some answers, I would really appreciate it, as well as the rest of the families that are in this program and the staff. Thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you. Um, I'll ask Dr. Baldwin to have someone from our staff get in touch with you. Would you please make sure that you've left a correct address and phone number at the table here so that it's easy for us to contact you? Thank you. It's time for the action agenda. First item on the action agenda is the budget amendment number four um, with Ms. Frisbee. Are there questions from the board? Hearing none, I am seeking a motion to approve budget amendment number one as presented. Number four. Number four. Okay. 
That's, um, Chair, I move that we approve budget amendment number four. Sorry, it was a typo on my thing here. <laughs> okay, thank you. And could I get a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next item on the agenda is Fairview Elementary School Renovations Project, approval of the construction manager at risk contract. This is for Mr. Fearley. Are there questions from the board? Hearing none, I um, seek a motion to uh, authorize execution of correct construction manager at risk contract for the Fairview Elementary School renovations project with Harper Construction Limited at 75% pre-construction services cost. Um, Madam Chair, I move that we approve this CMAR contract. Thank you. Could I get a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, next item on the action agenda is Hawk Creek Elementary School Award for Sole Source Playground Contract. This is also Mr. Fearley. Are there questions for Mr. Fearley? Uh, okay. I have uh, questions. Go ahead. You go ahead. Uh, just to, uh, Sole Source indicates that this is the only vendor that provides this type of equipment here. Is that correct? This uh, particular piece of equipment, a swing set, uh, matches what was just installed at Fairview, and this is the vendor that uh, installed that previous one and installs these. And it is in addition to what the PTO has done there, or it's, it's going to be in conjunction to it matches, with that. So it'll be very consistent. One will be upfit for the II students, and the other one right adjacent to it for okay. uh, the other students. That's what I thought I was reading, but I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Dr. Baldwin, at one point I thought I understood you to say that we would also be able to move some of the playground equipment from Fairview Elementary in addition to these swings. Is that still possible? Well, the, the playground that was referred to in the public comments is a community playground, and that would not uh, move. But we would, with the, uh, the new II addition, build a new playground that was appropriate for the II students. So we've got these swings here, and there may be other things in addition to Yeah, and there, to the there would be other things, uh, ultimately, when we build the building in another location. I got you, on the other side of the building. Mm -hmm. from, okay. And so can you give us any idea of what there might be in addition to those swings, or is it too soon for us to We haven't know? contemplated that yet. We'll uh, see what space we have and what's appropriate. We'll have to consult with the uh, staff and, and such to determine what would be an appropriate playground. Okay. We do the best job that we could to keep it very as equitable as possible, mm -hmm. uh, especially fitting the particular needs of, of the students that would be using that particular playground. As I, I know that it was a, a big community effort to to build that new playground at Fairview. I it's was, probably the best playground I, in Montgomery yes, County. Yes, I, I contributed to it myself, <laughs> and so I know that we can't probably replicate something that amazing at Hall Creek, but. I want to make sure we do more than a couple of swings. You bet we will. Okay, thank you. Other questions from other board members? Uh, seek a motion to approve. So moved. Thank you. Could I get a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Owen High School Capital Outlay Athletic Allotment Request. Um, questions from the board? I have a question, and it regards both Owen and Irwin Middle School. It right. appears from the information that we were given that both, uh, it must be the, maybe the boosters, had worked to uh, acquire these 20-foot shipping containers. And uh, when I look at what they're buying, it seems that Owen, I see three or four different bids, and they're, uh, Alpha, well, the, the company that they went with, um, they're buying their storage container for about $500 less than, than the one at Irwin High School. And I, I'm not questioning that. All I'm questioning is, is there any, do you have any policy or process by which we have multiple schools seeking the same type equipment, that there could be some value in quantity and even a better price for all involved? Or, or, or is this so, maybe it, it sort of falls to the side with the boosters each working maybe on their own, and there's lacking communication there. It seemed to me like there could be some value added if there was uh, 
opportunities for that to occur. And, and I had a similar question that maybe Mr. Ball or Ms. Turner could answer. Um, is, are the ones that are being bought at Owen, the thing that maybe is the difference in the price is the one at Irwin is a garage door. And I know that most of the time you put a garage door on something, that's going to add some cost to you. But I don't know if the ones that Owen are buying are just opening doors or are garage doors with a ramp for putting equipment in. If they're the exact same thing, then I would agree with you in terms of cost. But if, if the one at Irwin is, the Irwin proposal notes that it's the garage door, the pull up with the ramp so that they can drive the gator in there but I can't tell from the Owen if they're the same thing. Ours does not have ramps. Does not. Sure Just swing, swinging doors, that may be the difference. Is that the difference in the cost, Mr. Ball? Yeah, that was my guess. Is, and I, I was gonna ask the same question, Mr. Queen, to, and to I th verify And I think, that. is Owen's new? Meg, are you looking at two new? And I think Irwin's is, is, is what we would consider used. Correct, David? Is that, or where's Chris? Chris was here. He left. Oh, okay. But I, and I understand, but I still go back to the point. I don't know if our, if our business office or purchasing could look at this and right. see if there could be some way. It would certainly save the boosters from having to go out here and do all this and, and try to start at ground zero, nothing. And if you had vendors, or, and if they had an extra 500 or whatever, if, if they were the same thing and it worked out 500, that's 500 dollars that could go back to kids. Exactly. In there and right, I, I understand that. And, and we, I don't know how do we. It's not. It's rare that we have this from different schools that are doing the same thing at the same time. That's I first think. Time I've ever. But maybe some maybe that's some preseason pre so pre year a, planning. Is this a process question, or is it something that would prevent you from voting for these? No, no, I, oh, no, we're not, okay. no, no. But that's the what? other thing I would add to this, and I would ask this to our business department: um, Would uh, the boosters, if they're trying to do something and buy? equipment or something to help our students at the individual schools, do they have access, can they buy that through state contract on state bids through your office or, or are they limited to have to go out to outside vendors? She knew she was gonna have to come down here. <laughs> so thank you for the question. But to answer the question, yes. So actually to your point, um, Mr. Clark Wyatt, our maintenance director, um, has actually given me some paperwork that he wants me to put out to bid for such containers. Um, so I'm, have to, I'm in the process of actually going through it right now so that we can get different types of containers. So the ones with the roll garage door, the ones with the swing open doors, and we can actually get some pretty good quotes on that so that it can be available to the entire district Everybody. for that all schools. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, any other questions? I, I would just add, Madam Chair, that I appreciate the um, the presentations from both schools with the paperwork and the and the documentation that's it's greatly appreciated from where I'm sitting because uh, it's very very well done. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, I guess we'll do Owen High School first. I need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Second, Madam Chair. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Irwin Middle School. Um, motion to approve. So moved. Second. Aye. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We move on to the consent agenda. On the consent agenda, we have the minutes from pe February 7, our personnel report, and... Um, Appointment of Roger Metcalf. The appointment... Uh, no, I was thinking, was there something I was supposed to say after the personnel? Okay. No. The personnel report, the appointment to uh, the Board of Trustees for AB Tech, uh, Employment Verification Services Agreement with you confirm uh, 2019 Academic Summer School Plans, and Policies for Second Reading, Policy 3200, Selection of Instructional Materials, Policy 3227-7332, web page development. Policy 3410, testing and assessment program. Policy 3460, graduation requirements. 
and policy 3470, 4305, alternate learning pro programs in schools. Motion to approve these consent agenda items. So moved, Madam Chair. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Our next meeting will be April the 4th with the work session updates. Um, our session will begin at 5 in the executive conference room. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Any, uh, any opposed? Could I get a second? Second. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? All right. It looks like it's going to be a warm day tomorrow, boys and girls. Is it going to rain? Thank you.